Hi, and welcome to our quarter two roadmap event. I'm Ziv, your host for today, and I'm excited to guide you through the developments at Elementor over the last quarter and to share what we've got planned for the upcoming one. It was great seeing some of our team connect with you at WordCamp Asia, and we look forward to meeting more of you at our pink booth at WordCamp Europe this June. As you might know, Elementor now powers over 16 million websites, making up more than 10% of the internet, with our platform carefully designed to provide everything professional web creators need to bring their vision to life. Let's dive into our agenda. First up, we'll explore what's new in the Elementor editor. Dean and Celine, they have some fantastic updates to show you, and we'll also give you a sneak peek into what we're planning for this quarter. Then Christina will discuss the latest advancements in Elementor AI, and our team has been working really hard to integrate AI tools that can help during your creation process. And we're eager to show you how they can automate and refine your design work. Afterwards, Inbal will discuss the latest updates to Elementor hosting, and she'll explain how these improvements enhance your workflow and collaboration efforts, and also introduce new hosting plans and bundles designed to suit a wider range of needs. Lastly, Ben will talk about the image optimizer by Elementor and reveal a special surprise, another plugin by Elementor. All right, we have a packed schedule, so let's get started and dive into what makes Elementor the best editor for professional web creators worldwide. Dean, the stage is yours. Thanks, Eve. Before we talk about all the professional design features we have planned for Q2, Let's take a look at the highlights from last quarter. Your websites got a lot faster with an array of performance improvements aimed at creating smoother experiences for both creators and visitors. Thanks to enhancements to the control rendering engine, we've significantly sped up your TTFB metric, all while reducing the DOM output of widgets. This means your website's code is cleaner, it loads faster, and your Google performance scores improve dramatically. Here's a quick comparison between the version 3.21 and previous versions. Optimized control rendering has improved the TTFB by 20 to 30%, seriously boosting your Google performance score. We also introduced display conditions for elements, which has been one of the most highly requested features. Display conditions can apply to any element and give you the power to decide where, when, and to who you want to display your content. Set a condition based on different rules and parameters or build a sophisticated scheme of multiple conditions, connected with the AND or OR logic to personalize your visitor's experience. And of course, there's the Element Manager, which helps you personalize your widget panel by disabling widgets. This helps you do three things. First, you can remove widgets from your panel entirely to simplify your editing experience. Second, improve the loading speed of your editor by reducing the amount of widgets that appear in your panel. And third, if you're using Elementor Pro, you can disable widgets from contributors or clients based on the assigned role in WordPress. So they're able to focus on the tools that are relevant to them. We also made some small adjustments that make a big difference, like adding the new threads and X icons into the icon library, so you can use them without having to upload your own SVG. We've also added the option to integrate a Kismet into your forms to help reduce spam. These are highly requested features, and we're happy to make them happen. The last quarter has also been packed with important steps towards making Elementor even more inclusive for creators and visitors using assistive technologies. You can now navigate the Element panel with your keyboard, and more widgets are compatible with screen readers, so they can skip redundant alt texts and elements. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Now, version 3.21 has just been released, and I'm happy that Celine is here to introduce the new taxonomy query, now available in your loop grids and loop carousels. All right, Celine, take it away. Thanks, Dean. Another great feature we just released in version 3.21 is the loop taxonomy query for listings. This new feature gives you the ability to use the loop grid and loop carousel to display listings of your categories and tags. Using the taxonomy query in your loop grids and loop carousels will boost engagement while helping your visitors navigate your dynamic content. This is the most requested feature on GitHub, and it is fully compatible with third-party plugins like ACF and Custom Post Type UI. 
The Loop Taxonomy Query is developed to empower you, professional web creators, who are working with dynamic content-driven websites, like blogs, magazines, and WooCommerce stores. So let's take a closer look at how you can use it with a recipe blog. As you can see, the recipes are organized in categories by their country of origin and subcategories based on the recommended course to drive the dish. We also use text to indicate and organize the nutrition information such as gluten-free, sugar-free or vegetarian. When you add a loop grid widget or a loop carousel widget, you choose a template type. Once you upgrade to version 3.21, you will see that there are two new options, post taxonomy and product taxonomy if you are running a WooCommerce store. On the home page, you will select the post taxonomy. While creating the loop template, you can assign dynamic text to the relevant widgets and fields. For example, the taxonomy image to the image field, an archive title to the heading. A side note, when building with WooCommerce, product categories automatically come with an image field that allows you to assign a featured image, but post categories don't have an image field, so you'll need to use ACF to create it. Once you have created your loop template, go back to edit the query for the loop grid or carousel. Under the Query tab, select its source by choosing Categories or Tags. Let's choose Categories for this example. You can also choose to display the taxonomies in your grid according to the different filter settings. Setting the filter by control to show all will display all your taxonomies and allow you to filter the categories displayed according to depth. To do so, set the filter by depth control to the level of subcategories you want to display. One will exclusively display parent categories, two will display their subcategories, three will display the subcategories of your subcategories, and four, well, you get the picture. Quick pro tip. Selecting show all doesn't mean you have to display the uncategorized taxonomy automatically generated by WordPress. Just make sure the category is empty and turn on the hide empty categories toggle. This way, the uncategorized taxonomy and other empty categories won't appear in your loop grid. Another filter option is manual selection that allows you to choose which categories to display or hide manually. I recommend using the setting on websites with a single level of categories. That's because choosing manual selection will show all of your taxonomies and allow you to choose which ones you want to hide. In this case, you can only want to exclude two categories and you're done. Now that we've covered categories, let's take a look at how to work with tags. Quick pro tip, use a different loop template for your categories and tags. This will give visitors an extra visual cue that helps them understand how your content is organized. And similar to the way we use categories, go to the Query tab. This time we will choose tags as the source. As in categories, we can manually include and exclude the tags we want to display or hide. Final pro tip, I strongly recommend that you don't use the same loop templates to display taxonomies and the actual products or posts. This will help you assign the relevant dynamic tags. That was the loop taxonomy query. Can't wait to see it on your websites. Thanks, Celine. Just a quick question. Was that a contact button on your website? Oh, let's just say that this quarter will be packed with surprises. Say no more. Now let's take a look at some of the professional design tools planned for the coming releases. First off is the new Off Canvas widget that introduces a whole world of design options. It enables you to place a container anywhere on your page and connect it to a link. Pressing the link will trigger the container to open, displaying the content to visitors. This is perfect for vertical menu mega menus, simple pop-ups, and tons more creative ways we can't wait to see on your websites. We're also looking forward to giving you a new and improved search widget. As your visitors type into the search bar, a drop-down menu will open and display relevant results based on your website's content. This creates a more intelligent user experience and allows visitors to find the content they're looking for without having to load the results page. This upcoming quarter isn't only about design tools. A major product focus is making your websites even faster. We're going to focus in on three different areas. Number one is improved front-end loading time through the TTFB metric. Number two, cleaner code. And number three, the editor's performance. These performance improvements are great for your visitors and they'll be great for you, the creators. To improve the editor's performance, we've identified areas we can accelerate. 
We've already implemented some improvements, and there are more to come, like improving the infrastructure of nested elements. We know that building with nested elements can be sometimes a bit frustrating, and that the new accordion, carousel, tabs, and mega menu sometimes increase the editor's loading time. This doesn't impact your website's speed or SEO ranking, but it's important for us to improve your building experience. So we found three ways to fix this issue and accelerate the editor's loading time while editing nested elements. And we'll be working on them this quarter. That's it for the website builder. Back to you, Ziv. Thanks. Great insights from both Dean and Celine. So thank you very much. Uh, moving on, let's check out the latest advancements in Elementor AI. Christina, please go ahead and lead us through it. Over the past few months, we introduced a number of new innovative AI features within the editor to accelerate and improve your workflow. As AI capabilities grow and improve, we're constantly looking for new ways to implement features that further empower you to build professional websites faster so you can spend more time on the things that set you apart as web creators. We've also conducted countless user interviews to better understand your processes and how AI features can benefit you better. Your feedback, opinions, and suggestions help steer the product's development and have even led us to make changes to features we previously released. If you'd like to share your feedback or request a specific feature, scan this QR code and send us your feedback. Let's take a look at one of the adjustments that we made based on your feedback and usability testing. A couple of months ago, we introduced AI containers with three ways to generate containers in Elementor websites using AI. You can write a description of the container layout you want to create. You can reference the layout of another website to have its layout recreated on your website. Or you can create a variation of an existing container. This could be from a template, from the library, or a container you created in the editor that Elementor AI can then create a variation of. When we first introduced this feature, each of these approaches would create three layouts to choose from. Each layout introduced the styling and images based on your instructions. But what we've le learned since then is that when you're describing the container you want to create from scratch or referencing a layout of another website, giving you a selection of three stylized layouts wasn't the best process for you because often you had to adjust the styling and content anyway. So we've changed it. Now when you write a description or reference a layout of another website, Elementor AI will generate a wireframe of the layout. Then you can easily customize it to match your exact needs. So as you can see in this example, we provided a textual description of what we wanted to build and we got these three wireframe suggestions. And in this example, we referenced the layout of another website and Elementor AI generated the same layout on our website in a wireframe format. This time, we're only presented with one wireframe layout to select, since it's recreating the layout uh, you selected. Now, you can either customize it yourself manually, or you can create a variation of the generated containers by describing how you want to modify it. So with this first example, we can create a variation on the services section we previously created as a wireframe by giving it additional instructions, such as changing the background color to lilac, and adding some more information about a marketing agency. In our second example, we can create a variation and add content about a photography website. In both cases, you'll be able to choose from templates that include more content and styles. Another feature that we recently introduced is AI context. As we all know, AI uses enormous amounts of data to create content with, which means that sometimes the content suggested doesn't really match your business or its style. This is why we developed AI Context. You can set your brand's tone of voice and business information to ensure that all AI-generated content better matches how you want to communicate with your site's visitors and what you want to tell them. This provides you with better results for your websites and accelerates your workflow. Let's take a quick look at how adding context to your website transforms your workflow. In this short video that I previously recorded, you'll see what happens when I try to create a container based on a textual prompt in a website that doesn't have AI context set up.
Now, let's add some context to this website. So here, I'll write a paragraph that describes the nature of my business, how to analyze its tone of voice, maybe fine tune it a little bit. I'll add some logistics information about my business. Now I'm going to create a new container. I'll use the same textual prompt as I used before, just to see the impact of adding context to the website. Of course, this context will be used in any prompt I write, in any AI feature on my website, so you can imagine how much faster my workflow will be. The next feature we're going to introduce is the AI Copilot. It's already in beta testing with a small group of early access users, and we aim to release it really soon. Its job is to predict and suggest the wireframe layout and content of your next container. So it won't create your hero container because it analyzes what you're currently working on to suggest what should naturally come next. So, Imagine instead of having to drag in all the widgets and position them and having to write out a textual prompt or referencing the layout of another website, the AI Copilot will suggest the next container's layout for you. I prepared a short recording of how this works. What you'll see in this video is that after the FAQ section I previously created, AI Copilot will predict and suggest a number of wireframes that include content for me to choose from. That means that you can go right ahead and start putting your content in, choose how you want to style it, and get to the finished result much sooner. We've also built it in a way that it creates layouts according to best practices. Elementary AI is available as a free trial on any website, and it's been that way since we introduced it. So I encourage you to go ahead and try it today. The free trial is credit-based and not time-based. That means you get a certain amount of requests you can use. Up until recently, there was a single credit allowance for all of these features. So it's very possible that you would have finished your free trial before you got to experience some of our newer features. A couple of weeks ago, we changed this so that each feature now gets its own credit allowance as a free trial. So not to worry. If you previously run out of any of the free trial credits on any of the older features, you can still give some of the newer features a whirl. Now, if you're just getting started with Elementor AI, AI or AI in general, or if you're looking for ideas on how to use Elementor AI to enhance your websites and how robust its capabilities are, I recommend that you check out our AI prompt library available at prompts.elementor.com. We've got prompt suggestions you can easily copy and paste into Elementor AI on your own website, and they can also be used as inspiration to help you come up with other ways to use it. That's all for me. Back to you. Thank you, Christina, uh, for that fascinating look at Elemental AI. Uh, and next up, we'll hear from Inbal, who will talk about the latest updates to Elemental hosting. Inbal, the floor is yours. Thanks, Div. We've got an amazing quarter ahead of us, including new Elemental hosting features and exciting new plans. But first, Let's look at everything we've added to our hosting platform in the past few months. Behind the scene, we've made significant improvements to our performance, speed, and security, cementing our position as the best place to host an Elemental website. And now, we're about to give you even more value for your money. It starts with our current plans, basic business grow and scale. Starting this week, every new purchase of these plans will include a free bundle of extras that will make your Elementor hosting experience even better. New basic purchases will include a free one-year subscription to Elementor AI. Other plans will come with both AI and image optimizer by Elementor to make your website more performant. But that's not all. We've also added our most affordable plan ever, Hosting Lite. Hosting Lite offers the same powerful hosting infrastructure and features worth hundreds of dollars per year together with our core Elemental website builder at a much lower price of $2.99. But that's not all. If you have an Elementor Pro plugin plan for multiple websites, 
connecting one of them to Elementor hosting will give you and your clients an A to Z Elementor experience at an incredible price. We're also excited to introduce Elementor Static Hosting, our solution for high traffic, mission critical websites. The static hosting plans combine the benefits of WordPress and Elementor with the speed, scalability, and security of static websites. Sites on Elementor's static hosting scale easily and without any further need for involving your R&D teams. Also, you get to enjoy the security benefits from decoupling the CMS from the front end without compromising on your design and keeping the ease of updating your site with Elementor and WordPress. We've built Elementor Hosting to be the best platform for Elementor websites. With the new bundles and hosting light, it now has something for everyone, whether you are a creator, building for others, a business owner, or a marketeer working on a high traffic website. Last but not least, whether you are a website owner looking to share access with a designer, or a web creator managing clients' credentials, or a team member collaborating on Elementor projects, our new site sharing features allows the site owner to easily invite collaborators and manage permissions all from one place. Web creators can jump between projects without the hassle of managing sensitive admin credentials, simplifying workflow and enhancing security. It's been a great quarter and we can't wait to share what we have planned for the upcoming months. First of all, we owe you an update about the upcoming migration process improvements. It's taking us a bit longer than we expected, but dealing with an issue as important and stressful as migration is not something we want to rush. The good news is that we've made good progress. The new process is nearly here. Very soon, migrating your websites to Elemental will be easier than ever. Secondly, our roadmap for this quarter is full of updates to the infrastructure that makes Elementor hosting tick. We've been steadily improving our core web vitals metrics, and even though we are already in the top tier of WordPress hosting platforms, we can't wait for you to feel the improvements coming to the platform in Q2. Oh, and that's not all. I can't say much now, but we are gearing up to announce something that is bound to make everyone who hosts a WooCommerce website very happy. Follow us on social media to be among the first to know what it is. Back to you, Ziv. Thank you very much, Inbal, for those exciting updates uh, on Elemental Hosting. And lastly, we have Ben joining us to talk about two new plugins by Elemental, uh, the Image Optimizer and Backups. So Ben, welcome back, and uh, please take the mic and uh, tell us uh, more. Thanks, Ziv. Great to be back. Elementor is finding new ways to help web creators. Recently, we introduced our Image Optimizer plugin, designed to enhance your website's performance. The plugin was launched in January of this year and it's already accumulated over 200,000 active installs. Our audience found it very useful. Many appreciated the ability to set it and forget it, and reported major improvements in page load speed and SEO metrics. We ran some tests ourselves and found that just by running the default optimization of the plugin, we were able to reduce load time from 3.75 seconds to 2.09 seconds, a 56 percent reduction. Image Optimizer efficiently processes over 1 million images every week, achieving an average size reduction of 60 percent. Now that your images are all optimized, it's time to tackle the next website challenge. This brings me to the next plugin where we are planning to release Site Backup. Check out this short sneak peek. Can I blow your mind? Your website your precious, beautifully designed, money-making, client-attracting, world-bettering website. Is it backed up? Of course, at the same place it is hosted in. So if something were to happen to the host server, your website is backed up on the same server. Yeah. Check out Elementor's site backup plugin.
Back to you, Steve. Thanks, Ben. Uh, and that wraps up our look at what's next for Elementor this quarter. And I want to thank all our speakers today, Dean, Celine, Christina, Inbal, and Ben, for their insightful updates and the exciting advancements we have in store. And of course, a huge thanks to you, all of you joining us and continuing to be part of our community. Uh, so also remember that all the features and updates we discussed today are designed to help you build and manage your websites more effectively. And we're here to support you and your creativity and to make sure that you have the tools you need to succeed. Also, be sure to check out the complete roadmap on our website at www.elementor.com slash roadmap for more detailed information and updates. And don't hesitate to reach out with any questions or feedback. We're always eager to hear from you. So thank you once again for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing the amazing things you will create with Elementor. Until next time, keep creating. Ciao for now.